Our next speaker is a repeat presenter. It's the second time here, and I've had the privilege of visiting his house and having some of the delectable sous vide steaks he's made for us for work. Please welcome James Beard award-winning author and chef Kenji Lopez-Alt, who's here to tell you how the sausage is made. Hello. Hey, is this working? Yeah? You can hear me? Okay. Um, so today, yeah, I'm going to talk about um, sausage, which is something that's um, pretty near and dear to my heart these days. My, near to my heart, also near to my brain, um, because there's a lot of science involved, also near to my gut. Um, the good thing about sausage is that you can actually have, you don't really have to just pick one organ, you can just kind of shove all three organs in there. Um, <laughs> sausage. So um, I'm opening a sausage restaurant, um, and as part of the research for that process, um, I've been going to basically every sausage maker uh, in the Bay Area uh, to try out the sausages. Um, some of them have been really great. Um, there's a couple people we're going to work with. Um, some of them have been not so good. I don't really want to name names. But if, if you walk into a sausage place and the guy making the sausage is under 35 and has like a kind of hipster beard, um, you probably want to go somewhere else. Um, <laughs> But, so the question is, why, why is sausage hard to make? Um, I mean, we all basically know how sausage is made, right? You take uh, parts of a pig, you season them, you chop them up really fine, and you shove them into another part of the pig. Um, and that, that's sausage. That's how sausage has been made um, since at least ancient Greece, probably even earlier than that. It's one of the earliest uh, processed foods. Um, so the question is, what is actually the most important part of the sausage? That's sausage. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting, getting over a cold right now, so you have to uh, excuse me a little bit. But um, So what's, what the question is, what's the most important part of a sausage? Um, is it the fat? Well, fat is very important. Um, fat is what gives uh, fat-soluble flavor compounds a channel to travel onto our tongues. Um, fat is also where basically the sort of characteristic flavor of each type of meat is. So pork tastes like pork because of pork fat. Lamb tastes like lamb because of lamb fat. So in fact, if you want to... Um, if you want to fool a friend, you can take a very lean cut of beef, like, say, a tenderloin, uh, fry it in rendered lamb fat, um, and serve it to someone, and it'll taste like... It's a really sort of... It's, it's a, if, you, if you want to spend more time and more money serving someone lamb, um, that's, that's a way you can do it. Um, so fat is important. Um, now, is it the salt, the seasoning? Um, this is also very important. Um, so salt... Uh, it, you, you all know what food that isn't salted to... Like, if you've ever had a hamburger that didn't have enough salt on it, you kind of have to pile on the toppings, it's um, five guys. Um, but <laughs> salt is important. Um, it actually unlocks um, chemical channels in our tongues that allow us to perceive other flavors better. That's why adding salt to food makes it taste sort of more of itself. Um, so salt is very important. Um, the meat is also important. Um, so, you know, with, with, a, with any good quality sausage, you want to start with good quality meat, you, um, because that's going to be forming probably 70% of what's inside there. Um, so the meat is actually important too. Um, but which one of these three really is the most important? Um, this is my mom. Um, she's, she's a very private person, which is why, um, which is why her face looks like, um, like, like 1990s era Monkey Island Sprite. Um, here, we can use this one. This is a 2010 era Monkey Island Sprite. Um, this is actually a Bitmoji my mom sent me like three days ago um, when she was going on a trip. Does anyone else have this with their parents where um, my mom discovered Bitmoji when she was like 65, and I think it unlocked the personality that she wanted to have her entire life? Um, <laughs> It's a, it's a lot, her Bitmoji is a lot sassier than she is. Anyhow, um, this is my mom. So my mom um, is one of these people that has this condition where she can't have very much salt in her diet. Um, most people are fine with salt. If you eat too much salt, you drink water, you pee it out, it goes away, it's fine. Um, some people can't, though. Um, my mom is one of these people who has to have a low-sodium diet. Um, and so, as a chef and a son, that's really difficult for me. Um, because I like salt, um, but I do try and accommodate her. Um, so if I know that she's going to be coming, um, or if I have leftovers that I want to bring to her back when I lived nearby her, um, I would make a sort of low-salt version of it. Um, back in 2002, when I was sort of first starting my sausage-making journey, uh, this is, I had a job at a restaurant where part of my job was to make sausage every day. Um, my mom asked me if I would be able to make a low-salt sausage for her when she came in. Um, so I said, sure, no problem, um, and I did that. Um, and this is what happened. Um, <laughs> now... <coughs> um, she, part of it is a, was a flavor issue. She's, she's spitting it out because of the flavor issue. But um, this is actually a very accurate drawing here. What you see is that it doesn't come out as a straight sausage. It comes out in lots of little particles. Um, 
And this is actually what makes salt so important to sausage. Um, in fact, the name for sausage comes from the word salt. So salsus is Latin uh, for salted. Um, then in medieval Latin, that became salsicia. Uh, and eventually through medieval France and England, uh, it eventually turned into sausage. So the word for sausage is, in fact, all it means is salted. Um, salt is by far the most important part of a sausage. Um, and it's not just about flavor. Um, it actually has to do a lot with texture. So um, Thanksgiving is coming up. And how many people here brine? their turkeys, or dry brine their turkeys maybe for Thanksgiving. Um, and you, know, you all know that it makes a really big difference in, in the texture and the juiciness of the meat. Um, the reason brining works is that, so if, if you're unfamiliar with it, what you do is you take your turkey or your chicken or your pork chop or whatever, uh, you can either salt it heavily um, or dunk it into a, a bucket or a cooler full of uh, salt water um, and let it sit overnight or a couple nights for a big bird. Um, and then by, when, when you roast it, um, it comes out much juicier. And what's actually happening is that the salt, uh, that salt brine solution is dissolving some muscle proteins, uh, mainly a protein called myosin. Um, and once that muscle protein is dissolved, uh, the muscle fibers in the meat don't contract as much when you subsequently cook them. It sort of weakens the muscle fibers so that as it cooks, it doesn't contract as much, more moisture ends up inside. Um, very similar effect, to, uh, in fact, the exact same effect when you're making sausage. You take pieces of meat, you salt, you salt them, um, and then uh, I'm going to turn this guy on for a second. I just need to have some sausage warm here. Um, so you salt the pieces of meat, um, and what happens is uh, muscle proteins start to dissolve, um, and then when you subsequently mix it, it's actually very similar to when you make bread dough. Um, everyone here has probably mixed together some bread dough before you take flour, you add water to it, you start stirring it up, it starts out very loose, but as you keep going, it gets stickier and stickier and stickier. And what's going on is that the proteins in flour, uh, gliadin and gluten, and they're interconnecting and they're forming this sort of complex uh, web of proteins. And that web of proteins is what holds inside the moisture, it's what holds the starch, it's what, holds, it's what hold, basically gives the bread structure. Um, the exact same thing happens when you make sausage. Uh, you take your meat, you salt it, you grind it, and you start mixing it up together. Um, and as you mix it, prote uh, proteins start to interconnect, and your sausage starts to get more and more, co more, and more cohesive. Um, um, and what you'll actually find is that you'll start to see it sort of form like a film of uh, meat around the edge of the bowl, and that's, that's a sign that you've sort of developed uh, the protein enough. Um, this is absolutely essential to sausage making because um, that is what gives the sausage that sort of snappy texture. It's what helps hold in moisture uh, as fat melts inside it. It's what keeps that fat in there. So without salt, um, your sausage basically just crumbles. Um, now, uh, I, I wanted to figure out a way to demonstrate this for you all. Um, I considered making... 2,000 sausages, 1,000 of each salted and unsalted sausages, and distribute them, um, but I didn't. Um, <laughs> my restaurant opens in January, so if you want to sample my sausage, you're welcome to come down then. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is we're going to quality test um, our sausages uh, the same way that you would quality test a, uh, an airbag. Um, we're going <laughs> to smash it into a wall at 45 miles an hour. Um, so uh, we actually don't have a wall here, but we do have a Vibranium shield. <laughs> Maybe a uh, norm. Oh, and we're going to turn on our cannon. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this, this, uh, this is an air cannon. Um, when, when we started conceiving this, um, this segment, we were like, who do we know that knows how to build air cannons? Um, uh, and Adam, Adam was around. Um, so he, he drew a little diagram for us, uh, and we constructed it. Essentially, all we have is a, uh, a compressor. Um, it's attached to a solenoid valve um, that is holding back the pressure. And then we're going to get our ammo. Let's see if I can find a better one. And insert it into. This is how we load it. So what we have here is salted, salted s sausage. This is actual sausage. Um, now we're just going to load it up here. Um, I was saying next year this is going to make, make a really good um, proton pack Halloween costume. Um, yeah. OK, so it's a, the solenoid is, uh, valve is attached to a battery. Um, you ready with the shield? Okay, so ideally what's going to happen, um, this is the salted sausage patty. Um, we're going to do it again after, afterwards with unsalted sausage. Um, what I think is going to happen is that um, the sausage is going to essentially bounce off the shield because it has so much good structure in it uh, that it's not really going to fall apart at all. Um, 
is this, does, does this get recorded? If, if, if it works, um, cool. If it doesn't, we edit in post-production. Um, and you all have to sh keep quiet. Um, can, I get a, can I get a countdown? Can I get a three, two? Wait, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> people in the first three rows, um, and there's ponchos under your seats. Sure. All right, ready? How about, yeah, okay. Uh, actually, could I get, all right, yeah, three, two, one, ready? A, a, a kind of quiet three, two, one, because it makes a really cool noise also. So like a whispered three, two, one, ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I knew that was going to happen. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, a little miscalculation. Um, 120 PSI in here, uh, not that much in this larger cylinder up here. Um, it didn't work. So uh, last week, we tried to figure out other ways to do this. Um, we first tried turning this into sort of a large potato cannon, where we put slices of potato on either end so that pressure would build them in here before flying out there. Um, it got about three feet further um, than this. Uh, Eventually, what we decided was rather than, um, rather than solve this problem, we would just go with a completely different approach. Um, so we built this sort of high-tech device. Um, this is called the, the Patriot. You can, you can order it on Amazon. Um, just search for meat sling. Okay, all right, all right, ready? Okay, so here's patty number one. This is salted cooked sausage. Um, I think when, during test runs, we were getting maybe like one out of five of these to actually hit the shield, so we'll see. Um, all right, you ready, Norm? Safe, safety glasses on? Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, let me get a three, two, one again. Three, two, one. Woo! <laughs> I've, they, they told me that um, the screen, I, I can't do the screen, but the audience is expendable. So. <laughs> um, oh, did we get that on video? I think, I, yeah, you got it? All right, uh, well, I think we, so we did, we recorded this all in high-speed video, so we'll be able to review this, uh, I think, live immediately after. Um, okay, so you saw that it, it, it did break a little bit, I think because it hit the edge of the shield, but maybe two pieces, three pieces. Um, I'm sure with the video we'll be able to find out. Should I go first, or should we wait for the video? Okay. We're going to stand here in silence. We're going to shoot, okay. Um, I have an, I don't want to, I have another, a fresh one, just in case uh, that caused structural damage. I don't want to be accused of being biased in this important experiment. <laughs> okay, uh, can I get another three, two, one? Three, two, one. Whoa! <laughs> one more? Do one more. Or do you want the do you want the, the the salted one or the the same one I just did? Okay. Well, this this is the one I dropped on the floor. So. Okay. Uh, just a, just a two one this time is fine. Two, one. Whoa. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did that hit the band? Is that trumpet expensive? Adam will reimburse you for the trumpet. So. Huh? Oh, okay. So video apparently didn't work. I, th I think we might have, have old video, though, that we shot in the dress rehearsal. Do you want to just show the dress rehearsal stuff? Cool. Okay. Well, either way, maybe you'll see video later, maybe you won't. Um, you all saw it live, though, and that's what's really important, because um, this is a live show. So anyhow, us, we, uh, 
we didn't quite construct the sausage. I constructed the sausage earlier, but we deconstructed it now. Um, and so, um, I don't know, I guess you probably saw what I was pointing out. Um, the first sausage kind of bounced, um, and the other ones splatted. Um, and so you can, it's, it's neat, you can tell it's um, splatology, that new science, splatology. Um, but anyhow, you can tell from now on, whenever you go to get sausage at a new restaurant, um, you don't have to eat it, just bring uh, a slingshot, and you can tell how good it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kenji Lopez-Alt.